What's up, y'all? It's your boy Jalen. I'm about to react to 10 actors who are never the same after a while. Is it really that deep about acting? Like, do people really? I want to know. Do people really? Uh, people really change after a role or something? Like that. Whatever. Let's see how this is. And start. The life of an actor may seem glamorous, but there is a lot of hard work and emotional toil that goes into each and every role. See how movies like Terminator, It, and Star Wars have completely changed actors, forcing some to retire and some to never live the same again. Before you watch, click subscribe. We'll join our notification squad with the first to know of new Screen Rant content. Thanks to the generous help of the United States government, we are about to be involved in the greatest real estate swindle of all time. Gene Hackman. As a legendary actor known for roles in films like Unforgiven and Superman, I've Gene Hackman seen him in some stuff. Despite still being at the top of his game, Hackman felt he was too old to act anymore and became bitter about younger performers on set. The feelings began with the Royal Tenenbaums and reached ahead in the Ray Romano comedy entitled Welcome to Mooseport. The forgettable film Welcome to Mooseport, which will only be remembered as Hackman's final role, was released back in 2004. The actor didn't even too show old. up for the premiere of the film. He's How old is he? Every role since and focused on novel writing. You don't do exactly what I tell you, or if you give me any kind of a problem at all, I'm going to look over at my partner, and he's going to shoot, you know, Mr. Glennon between the eyes. George Clooney. George Clooney has charm, charisma, and is one of the biggest A-listers in Hollywood. He but is. a role in the film Syriana nearly forced the star to commit suicide. A terrible head suicide. injury on the set of the film sent the actor to the hospital for days. He was bedridden in extreme pain and had fluid leaking from his spine. The prescribed pain mm. meds made Clooney feel even worse, and after healing, he was very clear-minded about how the drugs impacted his body and the importance of living a safe and clean life. The biggest positive from the experience was the Academy Award he nabbed for that film. You, want you better have. That shit. You better win a reward for that. Shiny? Shelly Duvall. If you thought watching The Shining was intense, imagine acting in it. Jack Nicholson's character may have been going crazy in the film, but Shelly Duvall felt insane as she was put through months of torture just to film her scenes. Director Stanley Kubrick was relentless in the treatment of her and pushed her beyond her limits to get the performance out of her. Hair was falling out and she needed therapy, but she got oh, wow. the job done. Years later, a doctor film Ooh. interview showcased how far Duvall has fallen since playing the emotionally Damn. training and iconic role. I should have gone now. Without you, Bo. I should have gone now. I should have gone now. I should have gone now. I should Bill Skarsgård got the role of a lifetime by playing Pennywise the Clown in the horror adaptation of It. Pennywise clearly took on a life of his own. Not only did the clown conjure up millions of dollars of ticket sales, but Skarsgård was emotionally scarred from the makeup he played under during filming. Months after It completed production, Skarsgård still suffered from nightmares featuring Pennywise. The clown would haunt him in numerous ways, and in some cases, what? he would be dressed as Pennywise while another form of the clown tortured him. Freddy Krueger may have some competition after those horrific dreams. That's crazy as hell. Get this stuff we I don't. Oh, uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? Bob Hoskins. In today's acting world, the use of green screens, motion capture suits, and stand-ins is all too common. For Bob Hoskins' iconic role in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the whole process was unprecedented. For nearly eight months, Hoskins had to act alongside nothing, just voices projected at him. In the years following the film, he would constantly talk to himself and hear those cartoon voices in his head. He was forced to take a break from making films for a few years, but not long enough to stop him from making the horrendous Super Mario Brothers film adaptation. I, I wouldn't think that's really that big. I can't kill your husband, but I need to trust him. Colin Firth. For some film roles, you have to learn and master character traits so they look realistic on screen. With some actors, this means getting buff and in shape. For actors like Colin Firth, it meant learning a stutter to portray royalty in the King's Speech. The role received acclaim for Firth, but he also kept the stutter for several months after production ended. Even during promotions for the film, you can hear Firth stutter as he tries to speak and get through everyday conversation. A few roles later, okay. and the talented actor was able to shake the stutter off. But it it wasn't hard. You gotta make that shit convincing. Back. Watching John with the you gotta make that convincing if you're gonna like do something like that. The Terminator would never stop. Linda Hamilton. 
In a film like The Terminator 2, Judgment Day, you are bound to be around explosions, gunfire, and all kinds of other loud noises. Now, imagine all of those noises inside a small area like an elevator. Then imagine you forget to put the earplugs in your ears, and you've exposed your precious eardrums to the extremely loud Ugh. shots blasted by Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is exactly what happened to star Linda Ugh. Hamilton, and the results weren't pretty. The simple mistake of forgetting her earplugs led to permanent hearing damage, and she still suffers from it today. I know oh. why you're afraid to go out at night. <laughs> the Batman. Keith Ledger. Getting into the mind of a psychopath is no easy task. Yeah. Keith Ledger went all in for his iconic role as the Joker in The Dark Knight back in 2008. The role led to sleepless nights, insomnia, and a whole lot of anxiety for the actor. Ultimately, Oof. after filming Rap in the Dark Knight, Ledger was prescribed some pain medications and sleep pills, which mixed to a form of fatal dose and caused him to die in his sleep. The dedication oh, to his role was honored with the Best Supporting Actor Oscar at yeah, the true. Awards. Yeah. Be safe. Uh, I Jake Lloyd. A role in Star Wars can be both a blessing and a curse. For years, you'll be known as your iconic character and may have trouble landing other roles. In the case of Jake Lloyd, the young actor completely ended his whole film career after appearing in the Star Wars prequel, The Phantom Menace. After playing a young Anakin Skywalker on the big screen, Lloyd ended up being bullied off-screen by other kids. As the reputation of the film tanked, the teasing of Lloyd only increased, and the actor quit Hollywood altogether. At least he didn't have to play Jar Jar. Um. Cold and hungry and wet and tired and short-tempered. So get on with it. John Wayne. John Wayne starred in over 170 films. I don't know films, who that is. He performed his own stunts and is still beloved today by fans all over the world. His career could have gone on much longer if it wasn't for a stomach cancer. Cancer many people stomach cancer? went to his role in the 1956 film The Conqueror. It wasn't the physical work of the movie that took its toll on Wayne, it was the filming location. Less than 200 miles from the United States nuclear testing site in Utah, the whole production and crew were exposed to nuclear radiation on a daily basis. More than half of the whole movie crew was diagnosed with type cancer of crazy shit is that? production, and it was something that could have easily been prevented. Yeah. yeah easily have been prevented. In the there you have it. What story shocked you the most? Which roles were worth it for the actors? What did we miss? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this. All right. I don't think you should ever. Some of these are a little, a little too much. Like on to be honest, some of these are a little too much. Some people have lost their fucking minds for a damn role. That stuttering thing. I feel like to get it perfect, then yeah, that's gonna be hard. But niggas having, but people having nightmares about, people having nightmares about, you know, the role they're playing. And loot, like they said, what's her name from uh, The Shining went through therapy. I heard that the director of The Shining, that fool, uh, he would make sure that no one talked to her, that he would be verbally abusive that he would make her do like 30 or 40 takes in every every scene she's ever done so she was she was going through it from that role i found that out that shit was crazy uh, anyway yeah some of these i'm not gonna lie some of these are fucking crazy but anyway y'all i hope y'all enjoyed this video uh please if you like it please thumb it up give it a thumbs up fuck that up give it a thumbs up and please subscribe, and I will see y'all later. Deuces.